Places have a personality just like characters. The misty green hills of Ireland are very different from the glistening snow-like hills of White Sands National Park. So today I want to talk about setting as character, how to make your setting speak. Your setting should feel alive to your reader. It should feel like a character. This means you need to include your setting's personality, the way it feels to be there, and how the setting changes, how it arcs just like any other character. The degree to which you share these aspects of your setting will depend on how major a part your setting plays in your story. This is Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping authors like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers, because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. Let's start with how specific details show your setting's personality. Writers are told they need to get specific with their descriptions and details. But when it comes to setting, that doesn't mean you need to share every nuance of the place your story is occurring. Instead, you want to focus on the aspects of your story that show its personality, or that are being directly impacted, or are affecting the characters. In the beginning of the Graveyard book, Neil Gaiman describes the graveyard as, You could see the abandoned funeral chapel, iron doors padlocked, ivy on the sides of the spire, a small tree growing out of the guttering at roof level. You could see tombs and vaults and memorial plaques. You could see the occasional dash or scuttle of a rabbit or vole or weasel as it slipped out of the undergrowth and across the path. Notice how in this description, Gaiman spends more time and shares more details about the chapel than any other aspect of the graveyard. That's because the chapel is about to be featured. A meeting of ghosts is about to take place there. So it's the most important feature at this moment. He doesn't spend a lot of time describing the tombstones. Instead, he trusts that his reader can imagine tombstones without him having to say they were shaped like this and made out of granite or concrete or whatever. He also makes it a point to share the scuttle of a small animal because that's showing the reader that even though this is a place of death, there is still life there. This creates a feeling of mystery and secrets around the graveyard without making it feel too ominous. So when you're describing your setting, ask yourself what aspects are going to be the most important in that scene, and focus your details and your words there. You might still need to provide some details and descriptions of the other aspects of the setting, but you don't need to describe every nuance of those. Another way to bring out your setting's personality is to think of it as a person. Ask yourself, how would I describe my best friend? You probably wouldn't just say what they look like. You'd probably spend more time actually on their personality, what they act like, how they make you feel. The same goes for your setting. Take a moment and describe your setting as if it was a person. Yes, you're going to share what it looks like, but you're going to go deeper to what it feels like, what it acts like. That's when you start revealing your setting's personality instead of just the surface level descriptions. This isn't something you're going to spend a lot of time on in every scene, but it's something you want to have sprinkled throughout your story. Next, I want to talk about feeling the emotion of your setting. Similar to your setting's personality, readers should also be able to feel and associate an emotion with your setting. Does your story take place in a cold, harsh, unforgiving environment that makes your reader feel lonely and hopeless? Or is it more like Tolkien Shire? Warm, vibrant, and peaceful, a place that your reader wants to spend time and live in. The way you describe your setting is going to go a long way to building this emotion, to making your reader feel that place. For example, if I were to describe a hospital room and I wanted my readers to feel uncomfortable there, I might describe it as sterile, cold, isolated. But if I want my readers to enjoy being in that space, to make it a place of healing, 
I might describe it as warm, bright, and peaceful. Dennis L. McKiernan does a great job of showing the emotion of his settings throughout his Once Upon a Time series. In the book Once Upon a Winter's Night, the characters arrive at a place that's not so nice. This is how he describes it. Ahead stood a tangled, twisted wood, with barren, stark trees clawing at a drab, overcast sky. All was black and white and gray, no color whatsoever in the land. Here the characters have clearly entered a dangerous place. We know this because of McKiernan's word choice. Words like twisted, barren, stark, and drab all let us know that this is not a safe or pleasant place to be. McKiernan chose emotionally impactful words to reveal the dark nature of this place and create a sense of suspense. Think about that when you're describing your setting. At the word choice level, you can reveal emotion. So ask yourself, is your winter woodland dark and ominous, or is it supposed to be quiet and peaceful? You'll choose different words depending on the emotion you want readers to associate with that place. One way to explore the emotion of a place is to describe it through the eyes of your character. You can do this even if you're not in first person. J.K. Rowling's famous Harry Potter series is in third person, and yet when we're reading the first books, we get to see the joyous wonder Harry feels at the magical world in every page. She is describing this setting through his eyes so that the reader associates that same joyous wonder with the wizarding world. Think about that for your own story. How do your characters feel about the place? Take a moment and describe it through their eyes to show the emotion of your setting. I also want to share how your setting should change over time. Like I mentioned earlier, your setting can become a character to different degrees. Sometimes it's a minor character, sometimes it's a major one. Stephen King is known for making his settings, especially his small towns, major characters in his books. The hotel in The Shining is definitely a character. So is the town in Carrie. Here's a moment when we really see how that Carrie town is a character. Nobody was really surprised when it happened. Not really. Not at the subconscious level where savage things grow. On the surface, all the girls in the shower room were shocked, thrilled, ashamed, or simply glad that the white bitch had taken it in the mouth again. In passages like these, King's settings, often his towns, speak directly to the reader. They're given a voice just like any other character. That's one way he shows and uses his setting as characters. But it's not enough just to give your setting a voice. Like other characters, your setting also needs to change. It should have something of an arc to it. In Carrie, the town is destroyed. It's literally blown up by Carrie. And while that works for King's novels, that might not be what your story needs. Instead, it could be a subtle change. Maybe there's a new piece of furniture in the house, or maybe an old piece has finally been destroyed. Or maybe it's the way your character perceives your setting that changes. Maybe they used to hate their hometown, and now they miss it. You can also show the passage of time through the changing of seasons, and that can be how your setting arcs. Maybe the point is that even though all of these crazy, awful things have happened, Spring is still coming. So think about your setting and how you can give it a bit of an arc, just like any other character. Next, I want to share why an editor recommends thinking of your setting as a character. When you treat your setting as a character by revealing its personality, its feelings, and its arc, it becomes more than just the standard description. It becomes the type of place that lingers with your readers, and that lingering quality is what makes them continue to think about your book. It's what drives them to write fan fiction to explore more aspects of your setting or your world. This is the type of setting that can turn a reader into a super fan, 
the type of fan or reader who recommends your book to everyone they know. Thinking of your setting as a character, even if just for a moment, will go a long way in helping you dive deeper into your setting and better understand what it feels like to be there. This not only makes your setting a bit of a character, it can also lead to fuller descriptions and more ideas for how you can use your setting as an obstacle to drive your plot and challenge your characters. How do you make your setting a character? Share your approach in the comments below. And for more videos on setting and other aspects of writing, subscribe to Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping authors like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers, because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. To find out more about me, go to www.ignitedinkwriting.com. There you will also find a free guide to help you build strong settings. And now it's your turn to use your setting's personality, feeling, and arc to transform it into a character and ignite your ink.